Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Coach K, in the building. And today's episode is going to be about media nerve palsy. If you need more practice questions just like this, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because we about to lock it in. Let's get it. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and pop it right back in. We have a question about media nerve palsy. Let's lock it. It says, Audra presents with wasting of the thenar eminence of the hand as a result of media nerve palsy. The patient's thumb appears to have fallen in line with the fingers due to the pull of the extensor muscles. Upon examination, the patient is unable to oppose or flex the thumb. The observed clinical findings are most likely associated with which of the following deformities? So we have A, ape hand deformity, B, boutonniere deformity, C, carpal tunnel syndrome, and D is Benedict hand. Are y'all with me? Let's go up to the top of this question. I'm telling you right now, you need to know all about median nerve, palsies, what they expect to show up as, as far as clinical findings. You got to be able to know this for the MPTE. We're going to go through this piece by piece. Audra presents with wasting of the thenar eminence. I'm going to underline that because it's important that you know the thenar eminence is over here on the thumb side, all right? It has all the thumb muscles in there. And then you have the hypothenar eminence, which is on the medial side of the hand, all right? And that is where you have more of those digitive minimi muscles, all right? You got to know that for the MPTE. So it says wasting of the thenar eminence of the hand as a result of median nerve palsy. Y'all are familiar with the median nerve. Come on now, all right? But you have to know some of the muscles that are innervated by that median nerve as well, okay? So this question has set us up pretty nicely. We know that we have wasting in that thenar eminence and there's a median nerve palsy. Let's continue forward. It says the patient's thumb appears to have fallen in line with the fingers due to the pull of the extensor muscles. <laughs> you better be able to pick up this on the MPTE, y'all. What is this really talking about? It's talking about this right here, okay? Let me show you. I'm going to rotate my hand a bit. It's talking about that position of the thumb right there. It's fallen in line, meaning it's more in that adducted position. All right, let's continue down. The question it says, upon examination, the patient is unable to oppose or flex the thumb, which fits with what I just told you. The thumb is more in that adducted position, all right? And we're not able to flex it. We're not able to oppose it. Pretty much not able to abduct it either, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and underline that. That's important. It says the observed clinical findings are most likely associated with which of the following deformities. And we're looking for a deformity as the final answer. All right, so let's go down into our answer choices, rolling in and rolling them out. You are a boss right now. Make sure you remember that. You're a boss. We're going to get this question right. A, ape hand deformity. What is that? Well, ape hand deformity is where that thumb falls in line with the other fingers, and it's more in that adductive position. Ape hand is when the patient has difficulty abducting the thumb, opposing the thumb, flexing the thumb. It's like stuck in that position. It looks just like this, just like that. So already I'm like, mm, this sounds really freaking good. It sounds like what the question is saying here. It fits. Now, ape hand deformity is caused by typically some type of problem with the median nerve where the median nerve is now damaged and the muscles that are innervated by the median nerve are now wasting their muscles that are weak. And so they're not able to perform things like flexion, abduction, opposition. They're not able to do that. So ape hand deformity, I like it. It fits the picture right now. But hold on, we ain't done. Let's go down to B. B says boutonniere deformity. I know you've seen this one. I always used to mess this up all the time. Boutonniere deformity is when you have a central slip disruptions on the back of your fingers, right? Boutonniere deformities are typically caused by a traumatic event traumatic event where there's like a laceration or something to the back of the fingers and there's a disruption this thing called the central slip what happens is the finger tends to move into more of a flexion of the pip and hyper extension of the dip so it looks a bit like that you could check it out online 
Now, here's the thing. Boutonniere deformity really happens more towards the, the fingers, not so much the thumb. So already I'm like, ah, boutonniere deformity doesn't even sound like what they're talking about here. Um, in the question, it didn't say anything about a traumatic event. Boutonnieres typically happen from trauma or some life laceration. It just doesn't make a lot of sense here. I'm just going to eliminate this. All right. It doesn't fit. I'm pretty confident in that. Let's look at C. C says carpal tunnel syndrome. I know you've seen this one before. All right. So carpal tunnel syndrome, compression within that carpal tunnel area, and it does compress the median nerve. I know some of you all selected this answer because it was pretty. It was a beautiful answer. Why? Because in the question, it says median nerve palsy. So it's like we're trying to make a connection here. All right. You got to be careful because carpal tunnel syndrome isn't a deformity. So it's not even answering the question. The question is asking for uh, the observed clinical findings are most likely associated with which of the following deformities a difference all right and so i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of c because c is not a deformity let's continue down the line d benedictan y'all i do not like this answer i just don't like it i don't and here's the reason why because benedictan is associated with ulnar nerve palsy okay let me put that out here to the side so you can put it in your nose ulnar nerve palsy hopefully my head's not blocking that all right, ulnar nerve palsy. Now, here's the thing. A patient has an ulnar nerve palsy, and then they start to have a disruption in the feeling in their fourth and fifth digit. They start to feel numbness and paresthesias and all that stuff. But the other thing that Benedict Hand comes with is this type of posturing of the fourth and fifth digits. It's like this claw-like appearance. And the reason is the muscles that are innervated by the ulnar nerve become very weak, and you start to see hyperextension of the MCP, and then you see just like this clawing or flexion of the PIP and DIP, the interphalangeal joints. Bottom line, what am I telling you? That Benedict Hand is on the wrong side. Benedict Hand is more ulnar nerve on the medial side. It doesn't have anything to do with the thumb, the, the thenar eminence. If anything, with Benedict hand, you tend to see the thumb in more of an abducted position. All right? So, bottom line, Benedict hand is not correct. Why? Mostly because it's an ulnar nerve palsy, and the question says median nerve palsy. I'm eliminating D, leaving us with our final answer of A. This question right here was a little bit of a tough one. It really was. There was a lot of information here. If you got this question correct, congratulations. I will tell you that if you want to go into the MPTE and smash questions like this, be confident about it, then you need to know test strategy. You need to know what are the clues that the test maker is trying to give you. There's clues in every single question, all right? If you're struggling with this type of issue right now, there's a place that you can go. I want you to go to www.mptegroup.com. This upcoming week, we're going to be talking a lot about test strategy, helping people to raise their score, and even work on how to get down to the final answer with confidence. Where do you need to go? www.mptegroup.com. It's our free private Facebook group. I can't wait to train you inside there. Again, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel for more questions like this. I'll see you all next week. Let's get it.